Hello, welcome to the Crates Motel. My name's Conan. In today's video, we're going to look at the difference between insert effects and send effects, specifically in the MPC standalone. The whens, the hows, and the whys of a question I get asked on a regular basis. Let's jump in. Okay, so as I said, this is a question I get asked regularly. What's the difference between an insert effect and a send return effect? Why would I use each effect chain and how would I set it up? Now, before I get properly into it, I just wanna point out this is not a definitive video on insert send return effects. There's a million different ways to do it. There is no right or wrong. And if anyone tells you otherwise, walk away. I wouldn't be able to cover every single situation basically in the video is what I'm saying. Also, I want to point out that in the MPC, the reasons why you would choose insert or send return effect do differ slightly to when you're working in a door. So just bear that in mind and I'll point that out as I go through the video. Okay, so let's break it down in simple terms. Insert effects are generally placed at pad or track level in one of your slots on your track or your pad. And send effects would be when the effect is placed on your return and then you would send from your track or your pad to that effect. Okay, so in more detail, insert effects. Let's start with insert effects. Okay, so obviously on your MPC, I've just got a quick beat here. And I've got a vocal that I'll show you some work on as well. Insert effects would be at pad level, individually on these slots here, or at tra track level, individually here. So quite easy, as you know, you could do something like you know, put some EQ on there or put some compression on there. And insert effects are generally something that you would use if you want to use EQ or compression. I say generally, it would be if you want to kind of bake the sound into that particular track. So it would be something like EQ or compression or maybe lo-fi plugins, but there's, there's absolutely no rules, but that's what you would do at track level or at pad level. These would be your insert effects. Quite simple. And there you go. Send effects. Okay, so in send effects, we would go to our return channels and we would add an effect here. Now, if you use my template, it's already set up with reverb and delay on return one, return two. Reverb and delays do tend to be the classic send return effects. It's not you know, exclusive to, send, uh, to reverbs and delays, but it is generally reverb and delays. That's certainly what I tend to use it for, sometimes for compression, sometimes for saturation but it's more if I want to affect an entire group of sources, like a whole track with all your drums, uh, a load of vocals, um, a bunch of synths, it would be more a general term. And this is where the difference is with, in an MPC especially. In the MPC, we're obviously limited to the amount of slots that we have. So we only have four slots on a pad or four slots on a track or four slots in your returns or your masters or your submixes. So you have to think ahead. You have to plan out where you're gonna put your effects a lot more. So using send return effects, I think personally in the MPC is a lot more important. On a door, you have pretty much limitless. It, it's, it's down to your CPU and your RAM on your computer. It's how much your c computer can handle. But most doors have pretty much limitless slots. So you can, you can put a, the same reverb on every single snare, every single kick, if you want to. But this is where sends come in. A send would be, uh, uh, for instance, if I wanted to apply reverb to a bunch, a group of vocals, but it's all going to be the same reverb. There's absolutely no need for me to place a reverb on each channel of vocals. Same with drums. If I've got my drum kit and I want to create some space, I want to create, I, I want, I want people to think that that drum kit are in the, is in the same room. So I want to put like a small reverb on there, small room reverb plate reverb, something like that. If I send all of my drums together to a send effect, I'm gonna be able to just use one reverb. And it's also, it just gives it more cohesion. It makes it sound, to me, it makes it sound like it's, it's supposed to be there, that it is all together. Separate reverbs, it's gonna be more difficult because you're basically gonna to have to keep the same settings on every single reverb. And it's just gonna take more time. It's just way easier to use a send effect if you want to apply effects to a group of, of instruments or a group of vocals, etc. So, you know, for instance, also I want to point out on my template, if you watched my video on my template and I explain why I have some EQ after my reverb and have some EQ after the delay, it's uh, called the Abbey Row technique. It's an old school technique. 
I have noticed that Akai in their blank template do now also have reverb and delay on their return one and two. Coincidental, I'm sure. So as an example, I have my air reverb on my return one. So if, for instance, at, pad, uh, at track level, I want to go into send and I want to send my drum kit to send number one here, I am literally just going to have to turn this up So dry, and then as I turn it up, you'll hear the reverb being applied. Now you could argue, well, why don't I just do that at track level? Why don't I just put it as an effect? Yes, you can do that. But as I said, if I want to use reverb in a way that the whole track has the same kind of reverb, so I'm going to want to send my vocals to that reverb. I'm going to want to send my synths maybe to that reverb, my guitars, my percussion. So if I've only got one reverb set up, I can send them all to the same reverb. I can apply the same EQ if I want to roll off the lows or the highs, which is generally something you want to do in reverb because you can build up a lot of mud, et cetera, and a lot of sizzle, and it can just overtake the mix. So it's a lot easier to do that in here with just one reverb and one EQ. If I did that on each individual drum sound, I would have a reverb on each individual drum sound and an EQ on each individual drum sound. You can see where you're going to end up. You're going to be using all your CPU in your RAM really, really quickly. Even at track level, I'm going to be taking up two slots at track level with reverb and the EQ. And if I then want to do it at track level on some vocals and at track level on some synths, etc., again, you're going to be building up slots. You know, even with three tracks, at track level, I'm going to be using three reverbs and three EQs, when I could just be using one reverb and one EQ. So that is generally why you would use a send effect as opposed to an insert effect. It's more about, you know, with insert effects, you would use it. Let's say, for instance, let's go to the vocal. OK, so at, at uh, track level or pad level, let's put a reverb on here. Um, actually, let's just use air reverb. Quick, here we go. You're all that I wanted. Okay, so that's at track level. What I'm having to do here, now obviously the mix you can see here is at 100, but I'm gonna have to take that down to 50 if I want some of the dry signal in there as well. You're all that I wanted, but this if I take it all the way down to zero, then I've just got the vocal and none of the reverb. So you could argue, okay, why don't I do it like this? You're all that I wanted, but this couldn't last. I wish that it would. Now you can. There's no right or wrong. You can absolutely do it that way. And for instance, this is a really nice effect. Let's have a, a long. You're all that I wanted, but this couldn't last. I okay, so we'll do a long tail on it and we've got it 100% mix. A nice thing, effect that you can do sometimes, this maybe isn't the best reverb to demonstrate this, but you can have the vocal playing with lots of reverb, 100% mix, and then just gradually dial it back. And that, that can work nicely sometimes. Um, and that would be a reason why sometimes I might use an insert effect as opposed to a send effect. Insert effects, think of them more as, just before I go any further, I hope this isn't all over the place, but I am kind of doing it off the top of my head, it's not to a script. So if I'm jumping all over the place, I apologize. Going back to it, insert effects would generally be something that you would use as a statement effect. I call it statement effects. I've heard other people call it that as well. And that would be if I have a particular vocal or a particular drum sound or a particular guitar sound, and I just want to use a single effect on that to make a statement. You know, um, somebody like The Edge from U2, he uses a lot of effects on his guitars and he has them baked into the sound all the way through the song. It has that particular sound. In that case, I probably would run an insert effect. I wouldn't have it as a send effect. Firstly, I've only got four return send returns on the MPC, so I want to use them sparingly. And secondly, there wouldn't be any reason to do that because I'm literally only going to be using that one effect or that one group of effects on that one instrument. So there I would use an insert effect. But going back to it with a send effect, if I want to send multiple sources to exactly the same effect, be it reverb, be it delay, be it chorus, be it uh, phase, be it lo-fi, 
I would use a send effect. Now, the other thing with send effects as well, let's just go back to the send effect. With send effects, generally, you want to keep the mix on 100% because you've just got one channel that is just an effect. There's nothing, you don't really need the dry signal coming through there and you just want to treat the, the actual effect. And that's where, for instance, EQ comes in. I, if I had a insert effect, I would be EQing the vocal and the reverb if I was using an insert reverb. But with a send reverb, I'm only going to be processing the actual reverb. I'm not going to be processing the dry signal at all. And, you know, that that is where, for me, inserts do definitely fall down if you're using reverb, for instance. If I have a vocal and a reverb and I want to EQ the reverb because it's really, really muddy, I'm also going to be EQing the dry signal as well. But if I have it on a send, I'm only going to be processing the reverb. So that's kind of the main reason why I would have, uh, for instance, a send reverb uh, on a vocal so that I can just process the actual reverb. So just to summarize, because that was kind of all over the place. I do apologize for that. Insert effects are really, really useful for individual sounds or individual groups. And you want to EQ and you want to compress or you want to make a statement. You want an overall sound to that. Like say for instance, the MPC 60 or something like that. And you want, it, you, you, you want to be able to blend that with the dry signal. So that would be perfect to use insert effects. Send effects are going to be better if you want an effect like reverb and delay because they are the most classic ones and you want to send a whole group of instruments or even the whole song to just one reverb and that way you're only using one reverb you're only having to uh, if, if you want to automate for instance if you want to automate a reverb to kind of build up to a chorus or in a middle eight or something or, or a delay you want the whole track to delay if you had individual delays and reverbs on each individual pad or each individual track you're going to have to automate all of those and get it identical otherwise it's just going to sound all over the place so another good reason to use send effects with return uh, with um reverbs and delays <laughs> would be for that purpose, for automation. You've literally only just got one set of automations that you can do. And, and it's really, really good for that, for instance, especially for vocals. If, you know, a, a, an old school technique would be to build up a reverb during a verse, and then as it hits the chorus, you've built it right up. It creates tension, it creates um, more of a vibe. It just, you know, and, and that's what it's really, really good for. So that's, that's a, I think that's probably the best summary. You didn't have to watch the whole video, you could have just watched the summary. So thanks for watching. This is the Crates Motel. My name's Conan. Till next time.